And welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Monday, January 23rd. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Domain. Many of the stories right here can also be found at our website at IndianCountryNews.com. And here are some of the news stories for the day. A Canadian awaiting execution in Montana for killing two men in 1982 has filed clemency requests that he hopes will ultimately lead to a pardon. Ronald A. Smith of Red Deer, Alberta, Canada, filed the request last week with the Montana Board of Pardons and Parole, arguing that he is now a far different person than at the time of the offense. Smith was 24 in 1982 when he and two buddies from Red Deer, Alberta, were hitchhiking through Montana. They robbed two men who offered them a ride, and, sh and Smith shot both men in the head along U.S. Highway 2 near Maria Pass. Smith at first asked to be executed and pled guilty to two counts of deliberate homicide as well as two counts of aggravated kidnapping, but he later changed his mind has been fighting his sentence since. Friends and families of the victims from the Blackfeet Reservation have in the past asked the governor to reject any request from Smith for leniency. Tribal officials and members in South Dakota are coming out in support of President Barack Obama's decision to temporarily halt the planned Keystone XL pipeline from Canada to the U.S. Gulf Coast. Rosebud Sioux Tribal President Rodney Bordeaux has spoken against the $7 billion pipeline before, saying he fears damage to cultural sites and water resources. He calls Obama's move a tremendous victory for tribal nations. Obama said there wasn't enough time for a fair review of the project. His move blocks the pipeline, but doesn't necessarily kill it. Bordo says we have won a battle, but the war has yet to be won. Last fall, pipeline opponents, including actress Daryl Hannah, rode horses and bicycles and walked from the Pine Ridge Reservation to the Rosebud Reservation to protest the project. And today we talk with Shoshone Bannock correspondent Mark Trehant about the latest results of the South Carolina Republican primary held this last Saturday and ask the question, is Newt Gingrich on a roll that can't be stopped by anybody but Obama? Okay, Mark Trehant, thanks for uh, joining with us today. Uh, I understand you're on the road and we tried your uh, connection a little bit, a little bit slow. So what we're going to do is put something up behind you there so that your lips are not unsynchronized with uh, what you're saying today. Uh, what an exciting day in South Carolina on January 21st. Can you tell us a little bit about what you observed down there and saw and uh, where are we going all with this? Uh, Newt Gingrich pulled a great big upset. Well, the Republicans are proving that uh, their capacity for self-destruction is greater than anyone thought. And uh, they actually have an opportunity to um, take an election that they could have easily won and completely blow it apart. And uh, I think this weekend demonstrated that. Uh, is it because, uh, let's see, we had Huntsman drop out and Rick Perry, and it appears that those votes uh, merged to Newt Gingrich. It's the conservative right saying uh, Romney is uh, too liberal for us. Well, and I'm not sure liberal is the right word. Um, he, he's too a mainstream, traditional, rock bed Republican. And what they're looking for is somebody who can throw flames, who can raise hell, who can put their head out the window and say, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. And that's just not Mitt Romney. That's definitely not Mitt Romney. Okay, let's not call him liberal. Would we call him a moderate? Because he had uh, he supported certain health care things and came from a state that's known as fairly progressive. Sure, but I think it's more the tone of his language than it is his positions. Because you could argue that Newt's been all over the place with positions too. I, I think it's much more that he isn't willing to just raise total hell. Whereas Newt, uh, I mean, Newt says some things that are just factually not true, but that they really excite the Republican base. For example, Obama is a socialist. Uh, Obama is pretty much in the middle of things. He's not one of the more liberal Democrats in, Cap in Washington, D.C., and wasn't even when he was a senator. So it's pretty hard to defend that sort of rhetoric, but that's where they're at. Uh, Gingrich claimed that under Obama, uh, he had put more people on food stamps than under before. There was a fact check on that, and that's not the truth as well, but it sounds good. Right. And um, 
I mean, food stamps was a Republican program put together by Bob Dole of Kansas. It's hardly something that Republicans used to run against. Right, but uh, you got uh, Duke Gingrich running against Romney because he had some kind of a health care package that, uh, you know, again, I don't know what how it compares exactly to the health care package that was finally passed, uh, but he's getting beat up on that. Yeah, and that's a very interesting point because the plan that Romney came up with in Massachusetts was designed by the Heritage Foundation, which is a right-wing think tank. And even going far as back as the Nixon administration, there was this idea that you could increase the size of the insurance pool by creating a national mandate. And uh, that's basically what Massachusetts did and what uh, the president's health care plan does. And yet now suddenly the party has shifted so far to the right that that's no longer seen as a Republican plan. I mean, health care is a really good example of how this debate has become just a simplistic uh, throwing of rhetoric rather than actual conversations about the problems. I mean, we made a mistake as a nation in getting employer-based health care. And there's just really no other way to put it. Every other country in the world has gotten out of that mistake. Other countries have done it by going with the government. You could also do it with just paying people and letting them shop for their own insurance. But having employers be responsible for health care is the problem. And yet neither side wants to talk about it in those terms. They want to talk about it kind of in this uh, uh, broader uh, slogan fight with sticking with this employer-based system. Right. Um, well, uh, let's see. Rick Santorum came in third place with 17% of the vote. Is he going to be able to hang in very much longer with that kind of a status? He probably because he doesn't need a lot of money. He just has a very small core staff. And uh, I think he can at least go through Super Tuesday, which is the first Tuesday in March. So he'll be around for a while. And uh, Ron Paul picked up 13%. Uh, it, these are the last of what's considered to be kind of like the open primaries, Iowa, New Hampshire, uh, South Carolina. You go to Florida, you got to be a Republican Party member to get in. Florida, you have to be a party member, and it's a very big state, twice the size of all those other four combined. Mm -hmm. um, winner and take it's very all. Expensive. Well, it normally is winner take all, except for uh, the pe the party is penalizing Florida for going so early, so they only have half their delegates. Right. So it has a big impact, but half as much of an impact as it would in past years. Right. Uh, let's see. When are we looking for the Florida primary? That's coming up in another week or so. At the end of the month, right? At the end of the month. Okay. And then uh, Ron, uh, Rick Perry's dropped out. Huntsman has dropped out. Everyone else. We're down to basically four uh, people here yet. Uh, Gingrich feels like he's on a roll that has momentum that's, not un that's unstoppable at this point, considering uh, people thought Romney was going to take this and Newt surged at the last minute for his good debate performance is what they're saying. Right. He still doesn't have an organization, though, and he still doesn't have the same kind of money that Romney has. So it could be interesting to see whether he really can continue to go on. And doesn't he usually end up burning himself up in this whole process? I mean, he was reprimanded by the House of Representatives several years ago. Uh, here's a Republican Party that holds uh, marriage as this sacred sanctity kind of thing. And uh, there's all kinds of questions about him asking for open marriage, and people may say that it's not something that should be in politics, but uh, uh, these issues have been making it into politics more and more, and people, I think, fundamentally are going to ask these yeah. questions. And the really crazy thing is this guy that's running as a conservative firebrand was thrown out of office as Speaker of the House by conservatives. <laughs> I right. mean, it's just nuts. That is his history. Well, what do you see coming out of this? Do you, you think we're going to get a, a Gingrich-Obama uh, race here in the long run, or is it? Uh, are, are we at a point where anything could happen yet? Well, if you were able to uh, get a device to capture prayers, I'm sure that's the prayer you would hear coming from Washington, is please let it be Obama-Gingrich race. <laughs> <laughs> I Gingrich can't cannot win a national election. I'll just be flat out with that. You don't believe uh, that he can win a national election? I don't think he can win a national election. His negatives are so high. Uh, one of the ones that's interesting to watch is his uh, polling among women independents. Uh, if there were a negative number for support, he would have it. 
Okay, well, we'll have to take a look at that. Let's analyze that. We got a couple of weeks left before you're out of here, out of the country for a little while? We do. Okay, well, let's check back in with you. Do we get the Florida primary over with before you leave? Yes. Uh, let's yeah. do that and see what happens. We'll keep in touch with you, Mark. Thanks a lot today. Anything else that you want to tell the uh, Native News Update uh, public out there that's listening in today about sure. what to look for? Uh, well, one thing personally is I'll be uh, tomorrow's the State of the Union. And I think it's going to be a very important State of the Union this year because I think uh, Obama will outline some pretty clear differences between him and the Republicans and then try to get support for him. And I think they could be very beneficial to Indian country. And I'll be writing about that live. Well, we'll keep an eye on it because Indian country is what we want to make sure is well represented in the dialogue and discussion as we move along, Mark. Very thanks, good. Thanks for joining with us again. Okay. And join us this week while we preempt the news on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, January 24th through the 26th, while we travel to Madison, Wisconsin to cover the Wisconsin tribes and Wisconsin citizens and their opposition to AB 426, a bill that will weaken environmental regulations, provide immunity from lawsuit to mining companies, and most of all, it makes sure that the state doesn't hear issues that tribes have attempted to raise. While attempting to provide testimony and get some answers, Bad River Tribal Chair Mike Wickens was told he had three minutes to speak before Governor Walker's Jobs Creation Committee, who was holding a hearing first 300 miles away near Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and then under public pressure, another one in the pro-mining town of Hurley, Wisconsin, where over 70% of those that spoke didn't like the changes in Wisconsin laws, even if they were in favor of mining. Wiggins was then told that he should not change his subject when he asked who sponsored the bill and was told to respect the legislative process. Well, to Madison we go where we hope to provide an eye into protest being planned against this mining bill and bring the event to your computer desktop wherever you might be on the internet. And that is another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. Miigwech for joining with us and come back again soon.